Earlier we looked at a game in normal form. The game was the prisoner's dilemma, which truly the most widely studied uh, normal form game across all sorts of literatures, economics, political science, psychology, sociology. Uh, it has this natural dilemma in the sense that there's clearly one cell that maximizes bilateral gains, but the unilateral incentive is always to go against the grain, to cheat on the deal, to not cooperate, and that drives the payoffs lower. Interesting to see why this continues to happen. Now, that was a one-shot game. Imagine we played a game similar to that. Numbers are pretty similar. I just dropped a, a zero off. Well, let's, layer the, let's label these players. We'll call this player side player for want of a more original name. And we'll call this top player. And in the one-shot game, playing once, that's it, two ships passing in the night, the side player always sees it's better to defect because the payoffs are higher when it defects regardless of what its rival's doing. And the same incentives for the top player. Top player says, I don't know what the side player's doing, but if I defect and they're defecting, I do better. If I defect and they're cooperating, I do better. And since these are one-play games, they're both going to end up defecting. Now, the interesting question is what happens if they play many games, and they know they're going to play many games. You can see now that the, perhaps there's an idea that if we just keep repeating, it's clearly the case, and here's the fundamental intuition, it's clearly the case that for any given play, you'll make more money by defecting. But on the other hand, if you could somehow decide to take a short run loss, in other words, you're not going to maximize your short run, but think about playing a long run strategy, it's possible, perhaps, I guess the question is, is it possible for you two players to just sit there and keep repeating cooperate, 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 taking six bucks out of the banking system every single time, okay, or whatever, wherever you're getting this money, instead of going over there and just getting two bucks to split, okay, a dollar each. These are called repeated play games. They're hard. They're hard because a lot of it depends on people's discount rate. How much do you value money in the future versus money today? If you really need cash right now, you should go for the short run fix because you know the short run fix. Always stab your neighbor in the back. Defect is the right strategy. It makes the most money for one play. But if you really do have the ability to think that you can work this out and play multiple times, then you might do cooperate, cooperate. It's difficult because, as we talked about earlier in the United States, it's against the law for you to talk with your rival. Now, we said earlier, non-cooperative game is a game where you can't, buy, can't have binding contracts. That doesn't mean you can't get in the back room of some bar, have a few drinks, and cut a deal. Now, that's expressly illegal under the Sherman Act Section 1. Okay? We don't care. We don't have the Sherman Act here. They could get together and talk it. The thing is, even if they talk it over, when they get ready to pull the trigger, Defect is always going to make them more money for that particular time. Let me go back to one more game. It's called the advertising game. It's the last game we're going to talk about in games in, in uh, normal form here. And I'm going to put some numbers in here that if these people, two firms, they can either have big-time advertising campaigns or small-time advertising campaigns. Now, if they have big-time advertising games, the profits are going to be those one ones that we had before. And if they have, let's say, they stick to small times, profits are going to be five and five. And we're going to say that if one of them sticks to the low advertising and the other one goes high, the one who gets, stays low, that's sort of the cooperate, gets zero. And the one who goes high gets eight. So that would be firm B would get eight, firm A gets zero. And the payoffs are symmetric. Once again, this is a simple dominant strategy game. The playoffs are stacked so that firm A, firm B on the side, would always want to go high because the payoffs from high always exceeds the payoff from low. The payoff from high exceeds the payoff from low. Okay, we've done this a lot, so let's move on. Let me change it. 
Suppose I were to go in here with my pen and just change this to a 4. If I change that payoff to a 4, now you'll note that it didn't change any of firm A's payoffs, so A still thinks high is better. A, which is the top player, says, look, high is better, high is better. But look what happened, look what happened to firm B. Firm B wants to do high if firm A is doing high, but if firm A is doing low, firm B wants to go low. So now firm B's actual best strategy is a function of what A is doing. No longer a dominant strategy. Dominant strategies was such a great world because there was one play always there. So we, could, we as researchers could look at this and say, I know how they're going to respond. The solution concept to this, well, you know, there's several hundred different solution concepts to games. Most of them have a name attached to them from the researcher, uh, sometimes legendary people who have devised this algorithm for solving a game like this, where there's no clear-cut dominant strategy. What is the best rule that you can play? Firm B has to somehow figure out what Firm A is going to do because Firm B's best response depends on what Firm A is doing. Now, it turns out the one that we're going to use for this is called the Nash Equilibrium. It's named after John Nash. You know, there was this famous movie uh, called The Beautiful Mind that looked at the life of John Nash. John Nash won a Nobel Prize in economics for this particular concept. And Nash's solution to this game was to say you should do the best you can given what your rival is doing. That's in the simplest form the Nash Equilibrium. Now I know some of you are thinking, now oh, wait a minute, how can you get a Nobel Prize by just saying do the best you can? How does that work? How do you get a Nobel Prize out of it? Well, it turns out that solving this type of game can be a little bit difficult. Okay, Solving this type of game, especially if you have a continuum of responses, solving that type of game can have some pretty complex mathematics behind it. You can do it. Okay, That's what game theorists do. In our case, we didn't do any complex mathematics. We simply looked at a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's look at that 2 by 2 matrix and figure out how to solve for this, uh, for this game. And in order to do that, remember, we had to change this payoff for the, uh, we changed that payoff in that cell to be 4. And the way you do the Nash equilibrium is you just drop yourself into a cell and you turn to the player on the side and ask, do you want to stay here? Remember, in economics, we say that equilibrium is no tendency for change. So if it's a Nash equilibrium, what you do is you turn and you say to firm A, do you really want to stay here given what firm B is doing? So let's just do it. Let's just drop ourselves into the cell. And you look up at firm A and you say, hey, firm A, firm B is being high. You're doing low. Do you want to stay low if firm B is doing high? And firm A says, no. If firm B is doing high, that is, if firm B has chosen high, so we're on this, we're on the top row, A says, I'm not staying here, I'm going over there. And in fact, that's the same down here. If you looked at that cell and you, you don't even have to turn and ask B because you, B's doing low and you say to firm A, hey, B's doing low. He's getting five, but you're getting five, do you want to stay here? Okay, and A is going to say, well, let's see, I can stay here and get five or I can go over there and get eight. No, I'm going to move. So neither of these can be a Nash equilibrium. Well, let's look at this one. If we drop into this equilibrium, this cell, can it be a Nash equilibrium? B is doing low. A is doing high. You say to A, hey, if B is doing low, you're doing high, do you want to stay? And A says, you bet I do. A is better than 5. I'll stay right here. Turn to firm B and say, hey, B, A is doing high. You're doing low. Do you want to stay here? And firm B says, no, I want to go up there. If, in fact, Firm A is doing high, that is putting us in this column. I don't want to stay here, I want to go here. So one of the, as long as one side wants out, it can't be an equilibrium, no tendency for change in the Nash rules. Let's do this last one. A is doing high, B is doing high. You say to A, hey A, B is doing high, you're doing high, do you want to do high or low? 
Ace says, well, one's better than zero. I'll stay at high. You turn around and ask firm B on the side. You say, hey, B, you're doing high. A's doing high. Do you want to stay at high or do you want to go to low? And B says, I'll stay at high. Well, neither one of these two want to leave. Okay? That's a Nash equilibrium. No tendency for change. Now, it turns out that's a pretty simple one because it's a two-by-two two matrix. We don't have to do complex math. But sometimes, even with two-by-two two matrices, you can get examples where there are multiple Nash equilibria. Maybe two of these cells can exist. And unfortunately, there are, not very frequently, but there are times where none of the cells are in Nash equilibrium, that they're always rotating. Somebody wants to jump out no matter what cell you're in. But it turns out, even with these little idiosyncrasies about the Nash equilibrium. The reason the Nash equilibrium is so popular is that it is so robust in actually predicting what players would do, whether it's individual players behind uh, two-way, one-way windows, one-way mirrored windows in a police station, or whether it's firms thinking about cheating in a cartel, or whether it's firms thinking about how they should advertise. The Nash equilibrium is a great predictor of how people behave.